Welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi. Been a long time. <laughs> this is part two I'm Deb. of our video number 39. And I sort of lost my head on the last video when we ended because I forgot my head. Um, I was going to tell you about the other project I'd been working on, which was the Amigurumi. And I did hear someone else pronounce that differently. And I think they're probably closer because they've been to Japan. Um, but this is the little Disney princesses pattern booklet that I got to do these with my granddaughters and I actually made it through and this this is the way it fits on the body with the the high point at the top because then all of um, all of the curls on uh, Merida that's yeah. her name come cascading down off the top but these are bigger than I thought they were going to be. Yes, me too. I thought they were going to be yeah. about this big. Yeah. So I Cute. looked up that uh, Sibelia yarn, the crochet yarn that DMC makes in the small spools, and it's a really fine uh, yeah, you crochet me a yarn. Of it, yeah. Um, and they do have that online, and they also sell it in some stores, and they have quite a few colors. What did you put in the middle of this? This is just um, poly. Uh, Polyfill. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Stuffed really, really full, it said. Um, and I just kept pushing it in there. I probably could have gotten a little more in, but I wanted it to be soft enough to, to have a little give. But these little eyes are fun. These little, <laughs> they call them safety eyes. There were only two sets with the pattern, so I need to get some more. And you guys were great. You told me where I can find them. But it, it looks like a button. It has a little stem off the back and it has ridges on it. And then there's a white collar and I never knew what these things were. I'd see them laying around but never knew what they were. You take the white collar like the back of a pierced earring yeah. and you get up inside your piece and you hold that collar and you push it up against the back of the safety eye and they will not come out because wow. they snap right over oh, those ridges wow, on the back nice. of it. Yeah. So, nice. um, Merida or I guess it could also be Cinderella. It could be right now, It could be a snowman. <laughs> yes, it could. Or it could be E.T. Yeah, I was going to say, a little alien. Yes. <laughs> Just put a little hair up. It could be Kilroy, yeah. too. That'll date me, won't it? Um, so anyway, that was the other thing. I was really proud of myself yes. to be able to go from starting this with the magic loop at the top all the way down to finishing it off. Um, with a whole bunch of yo's in between. <laughs> um, every stitch had two yarn overs on oh, okay. it. So every one of these stitches had a yo, yo. <laughs> so Very cool. Yeah. And, and you I, had never done that before? Nope. That's awesome. I'm very anxious um, to do, I'm to now work hair. on the arms and the oh, hair. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, the arms, um, I thought there, there was a, a channel on YouTube that I watched that did a doll for an infant it starts at the base and you work up and then you um if i'm not mistaken you get all the way up to the arms and then you add the arms attach them but then it goes on up and and ends in the head so it's all one uniform oh, body okay um and i thought what a cute idea for a brand new baby yeah. you know to put in the crib with it there's nothing that they can hurt themselves with yeah yeah um but it'll nice. be fun to, to play with. Very cool. Um, but now we're at the fun part. This is what I said you didn't want to miss. Deb started on um, her farmhouse project mm -hmm. from Little House Needleworks. Yes. Um, take it away. Okay, well, I'll show you. show you what I'm doing here. Liz, do you mind helping? Not at all. Oh, thank you. I had to move the yeah. liquid <laughs> or we'd be wearing it. So the, the farmhouse Christmas um, you've all seen it. Um, there's nine of them, but I'm not using the quilt square. So I'm going to <clears throat> stitch the others kind of like if you remember from our very first video. I also did um, hometown holidays. Hometown holidays. And I, I did them as a town. Um, so with this, I just wanted to kind of build my farm. And um, I call first... this coloring with Deb because yeah. she's designing this as she goes, and it's really fun to listen to how she did it. Aww. The, the first one I started with um, was the part three, and that's the, the white house with the truck. Um, so I did the house, and um, the truck, I, I did the same, except I did want a Christmas tree in the back of the truck, so um, I stitched in a Christmas tree. And 
um, left out the snowman. Um, I changed the tree on the side. So it's mostly the, the same pattern. I just kind of tweak it as I go. And then for my snow here on the ground, I wanted it to kind of look like it had snowed at some point, but it's not. It's kind of like that point where it snows, but then some of the snow has melted. So, so you have patchy snow. Yeah, yeah. And all my snow is um, just a tent stitch. I did not do a full cross stitch for that. And then after that, I did part nine, which is the red barn. And um, I did a lot of back stitching on the barn because I thought it needed a little more uh, detail. Oomph. And then, yeah, a little more oomph. <laughs> my sheep here, I stitched them over one because I wanted the scale to be better. Um, I wanted them to be smaller. And then I put this little um, corral, this little fence down in here. And what I like about them, I'm going to get a little closer with them, but the shape of them, there's no way you can confuse that with a cow because <laughs> they've got the little legs, they're short, and then all that fur around yeah. it. Some patterns, <laughs> if you look, um, you'll see them. And sometimes it's hard to tell on a hill. Yeah. Off in the distance, whether you're looking at a cow or a sheep. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then after that... I <clears throat> picked out the sign, the farm sign, out of this pattern, and I put that down here, and underneath of it I put three shrubs that have some berries and then two trees on either side. Um, then I wanted to kind of layer it a little bit and make this house look um, it, more dimensional, mm -hmm. yeah, more depth. And that is out of... Off in the distance. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, that is off of part four. <laughs> so that will be this house here. Although I'm changing the roof color, um, I did backstitch in at the windows and I changed this tree over here. So again, with my snow then, I'll be able to kind of build this down and bring it downhill here like this. And then I'll start my next part of my farm, whichever that is. I kind of make it up as I go. I, I'm not even sure what this is gonna be yet. Um, but I'll finish, I'll finish this house and then move on. And eventually get most all of these patterns in there. It's awesome. Now, Thank you. you're using the colors that they call for? Um, not really. Remember, okay, when I did my hometown holidays, mm -hmm. I had um, put the colors that, most of the call for colors, but some of the colors I wanted to use on these cards. Well, I had so much of this left still and uh -huh. I thought, I'm, I love all these colors. I'm just going to go ahead and just pick and choose. Yeah, pick and choose. So it really is coloring with them. So um, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And then for my snow, you know how much I love grits. Yep. So grits is my snow. Okay. But then I wanted a little bit white, more white for the house um, and any of the white that's actually in the buildings. So that is white wash. So it's not a huge difference, but it's just enough. Mm -hmm. Um because I wanted the snow to be a little more subtle. Did you see or have you seen uh, white Thank lightning? You. You're welcome. No, but I just heard that you had that in one of your new um, yep. one of your new charts you got, and I thought that's a cool name. In fact, is it like I think it's with bright? Me. Let me look. I think it's in this pattern. It is. It's almost a blue white. That's okay. what brought it to mind. I okay. thought that goes one beyond the um, the other one. Double check. Yep. Here she is now. Oh, it's got like a blue gray. A lot of gray. Wow. Isn't that different? Yeah. That is pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty. Wow. Um, it's, I don't know how new it is. It's new to me. I yeah. should have said, whoops, sorry. That was a new name to me also when I heard you say it. The so anyway, that's what I'm shape. working on until I can actually get my farm scene, farm scene. going. I will have two farm scenes going. <clears throat> Can I um, say something about this a while? Sure, Is go ahead. Right? Um, when I finished my Mosey and Me pattern, December 25th, oh, <laughs> hi. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> hi, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> um, I, I can't even tell where I was after, I mean, did they even see me? I'm not sure. Oh, when you were showing your piece? Oh, no, I don't, that's fine. I just thought when I was talking. Oh, just I now. Sure I was in that. I think you were. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so people were interested in the pattern, and I would like to pass that on. Um, so I thought if you are still interested in this, and you 
can leave us a comment. That's the mosey and me pattern. Yes, just um, maybe say something about December 25th in your comment and then I'll know that you're interested in this pattern and we'll give it away um, next time. Okay, I'm interested. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a couple questions quick before we move into Gadget Corner. Okay. Um, well, first we'll start with something funny. I learned from Deb that you don't have to put away all your Christmas stuff. Well, if it's winter yeah. and not just Merry Christmas, Joy to the World, mm -hmm. you can leave it out. Like your greens, your um, snowmen, your snowmen uh, maybe even a wreath if it's not just specifically Christmas looking. Yep. So I've been trying to do that in the last couple holidays when I put stuff away, say, no, that's more winter. I'm going to leave that out. Then I don't have to go right from from fluffy to flat. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, one of the things I like to do with soap dispensers, and this was one I absolutely fell in love with. We were at Home Goods shopping about four years ago, Deb and I, after a guild meeting. And I put my hand lotion in it. And then I leave that out. I can leave it in the living room. I can leave it in the kitchen. I can leave it in the bathroom. So, I had had hand lotion in it for a while. And I tried to use it, and I thought, oh, that's really gotten kind of yeah. condensed. Yeah. You know, it had lost the moisture in it. So I thought, I'll, I'll clean that out, and I'll put in the new hand lotion I have. So I took the top off, I rinsed it out, cleaned it out, turned it upside down. Will you read what that says out loud? Winter magic? Around the top. Oh, made in China. Microwave and dishwasher safe. <laughs> Sorry. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to be microwave and dishwasher safe and you can't find it and it doesn't, it isn't, and then you get a lotion dispenser that you can microwave. I, maybe you want I warm just, lotion. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and it's a snowman. No, I mean, what's the ludicrous need there? You know, I mean, you're going to microwave your snowman and all it does is hold soper anyway that's that's cute aside from the decorating issue i could not believe that that's microwavable <laughs> and that they had did to you try it us. no i'm shocked <laughs> no i did not because i couldn't figure out why or what to put in it to microwave it i could see me putting it in empty and having it explode wouldn't it be funny though if you did put it in a microwave because if somebody put that in the bottom i thought Ugh, what idiot's gonna put this in the microwave <laughs> And then they stick it in the microwave, and as you're watching it, the snowman melts. melts. <laughs> like his face just comes off. And a little carrot laying in the bottom of your microwave. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought that was so funny. Microwavable. <laughs> All right, actually, this is more to the point. <laughs> Deb and I, a long time ago, I learned in a guild about using paper tape on the edges of your stitching that wasn't acidic, um, didn't have a high adhesive to it, and was really easy to work with and that was the 3m i called it bang tape because when i was a little girl it went straight across the bangs mm -hmm. um to yeah. keep them from standing up Hair when tape. my mom yeah. did my my pin curls to sleep on overnight and it didn't leave a red mark on my forehead for church in the morning <laughs> or anything like that no matter how hard they rip it that's off that's right <laughs> or how long the adhesive stayed <laughs> so i went online and ordered this tape for gosh it was years, and then when I met you, I introduced you to it, and we ordered it online for a good three or four years, yeah. and then I couldn't find it anymore. And I used to be able, in between ordering it online, which I could order more of them that way, I would go to Sally Beauty Supply mm -hmm. and pick them up there. And at Sally's, I could get just the the roll without yeah. the dispenser, yeah. and then we would just it was refill just the refills. it. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you live anywhere, any of you, where you see this? If you do, would you let us know where we can find it? Because this stuff is awesome. It it's is. Great. And and it's an. I was going to use it for Gadget Corner, but when I can't tell you where you can get it, yeah. it's kind of a pointless Gadget Corner. Yeah. So maybe you can kind of do some background search for me and find mm -hmm. out where we can still access this. Yes. And then, um, and then I'll use it for Gadget Corner uh, <laughs> at a future date. <laughs> So thank you for letting me um, ask that <laughs> of you. And now we're at the fun part, which is Gadget Corner. <laughs> um, this one is different. It is um, a product that was developed by an individual. It's called 
rod and roll for needlework. I found it because I like to stitch in hand and yet doing some of those larger pieces like the samplers and things yeah. are a little more difficult. I brought with me what I will call the small size rod and roll and it's on my the beginning of my turkey bay. I have not picked up my turkey bay sampler since Deb and I were down mm -hmm. in Salty Yarns but it attaches to your linen in a really simplistic way. It is a tube with a slot and it's hollow. So you slide the edge of your linen in and then you roll it and it actually comes with these pins or excuse me needles to slip in and I guess they're um, quilting pins actually to slip in and hold it in place and you can uh, roll it as you go as you stitch and only expose whatever it is you're actually stitching on at the time. I put it on this side of this piece. Sometimes I like to put it at the top, um, mounted up here or mounted at the bottom, or sometimes I'll, I'll um, do the side. This particular one I did it on the left because it was a pretty small piece and I could hold it that way. I have um, two other sizes. Um, One's a little smaller than this. I think it's 10 inches. And then I have one that I think is 20 inches. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that one is the one that I think I might try once I get back to stitching on the larger lap frame. Mm -hmm. And if I can get my back to calm down a little more, then I might try using the, the larger frame for the sampler. Yeah. But this is really nice to stitch with. Yeah, it is. Um, so it's called... Now, when you buy the different sizes, uh -huh. do you only get one size per package? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, they're all individually packaged. Um, let me just show you. There's nothing on the top. It's open. There is a little uh, plug on the bottom so it doesn't slide out if you're holding it this way. Or Oops. if you're holding... <laughs> because your plug. <laughs> Found it. Um, or if you're holding it this way, it just it secures one end for you. But the pins just go right in. I just put them in through my little slot so it holds it in there. But as you unroll it, you'll see it's just right inside that slot. I can pull it straight out of there, or I can slide it right off the, the rod. And it just holds that edge around. Very cool. And then I could turn around and do it the other way. And it's very light. It's not cumbersome in your hand. No, there's no nice. weight in it at all. Yeah. Where um, that's a nice factor because... If you have a lot of fabric, you don't want to add weight to it. Right. Now, yeah. I don't know if you can see how easily that went on, but now I've already mounted it on the... Oops, I <laughs> turned it too quickly. On the side. You spoke <laughs> now it's, too soon. Now it's moving on me just a second. But <laughs> once you slide it onto the side, if I had just rolled it when I had it there, I'd be good. Mm -hmm. But you roll it right up, pin it on the corners, and yeah. you're good to go. Very nice. So, gadget corner, rod and roll. This. So do you get? Did you order that online? I did. Okay. Um, you can also order it um, by phone. Um, and this is this um, item can be uh, gotten right from the Tennessee area. I believe it's the person that actually designed it that sells it through oh, there. Oh wow! So I will put this um, in the in the drop down, and I'll put the information that came on the back of it. Um, of how to contact them. I wish I could remember the, the woman's name um, offhand. I don't. Maybe I'll give her a buzz before I put this in there and let her know that we're going to talk about it and that you'll um, have her name. That's really neat. I think a lot of people would like that. Yes. That's great. So. And a really cool... Now, do you wrap everything around then and store it that way too? I leave it... I, I've left that on Turkey Bay the whole time. That's cool. So that's what, two jamborees ago? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. That's how we measure our <laughs> how time. How long has Liz had Turkey Bay? Um, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'll leave it on like that when I didn't have a call for it for something else because I was using um, other pieces I was working on were smaller or they were um, in my other lap frame. So if I need it, I don't have any trouble just taking it off and pulling yeah. it out because it's so easy to put back. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. What a good idea. That's one of those things you think, man, I wish I would have thought of that. And how simple, I mean, I don't know exactly how they created the, the tubing, but <laughs> the rest of it, you can buy these in a package of 50, 
in the quilt area and put your packages together. Yeah, that's neat. So thank you to the Very inventive cool. mind that mm -hmm. came up with that. <laughs> now, you have a finish finish, right? Oh, well, I had my stitching finished on it, yes. Um, we had talked about it a little bit earlier um, in the first part of the video. She did this last week. You showed your progress, yes. right? Widgets and wool primitives. It's the Better Not Pout. Um, they made it into a pillow here. I will be making mine into a pillow. And I wanted it to be a large pillow, so I stitched it on the 19 count cork, and it is over two, but I used three strands. Um, so here's my finished piece. This goes extremely quick. Oh my goodness, if you want something easy to just kick out real quick. Yeah, I was surprised with as little stitch time as you had between our visits, the the yeah. last video and then when we got together and you were down to just that one corner. I know. I mean, it just goes so fast. And I love, I love switching from a smaller count to a larger count when you just need something that... And there were so many color changes in that. <laughs> <laughs> a whole four. <laughs> four. Today's, today's broadcast is brought to you by the number four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Sesame Street. That was one of my favorite oh, shows. That was McKenna's favorite show. I it was, loved it. Carrie that was loved great. It too. Some of those kids' shows, you just want to. Yeah, I know. My like, goodness gracious, but I that was Ses my. Favorite. I love Sesame Street. That was just great. Okay, I'm excited to share with you two things I finished. <laughs> um, I'll start with the the one that I have a little help with here. Um, I wanted to get. I just cannot wait to find out why she has a hammer. <laughs> I brought a hammer today, along with my finish, so Deb's curious, and I haven't shown her what I finished yet. <laughs> so this is um, the pattern I bought, Foxwood Crossings. I bought this when I took a class, um, was this when I took the class up at Stitches Unlimited and I found this in the mm, shop? Yeah, I think be. so. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to test out that other color of um, perforated paper. These are all stitched, the background is all stitched in that blue-gray as a solid background on brown paper. So remember I had found that uh, over dyed or dyed paper and this was my female and I think it came out really pretty oh, against so that cute. brown yeah. slide. Now yeah, I like that a lot. As I finish these, I'm gonna cover something up here so you don't see it initially. See if I can mm. do this without you seeing it. Um, here we go. There's the cardinal, the male. Now, when I did these, I had picked out some finishing things just from the bin that I had been using on some of my other ornament finishes. And I grabbed just some sort of, I would call this a Christmas red um, satin ribbon, um, probably a little bigger than a quarter inch. And then I had these bows Everybody's seen these. If you've seen a little bow, you've seen these. They're everywhere. There's the thinner quarter inch silk ribbon bow, again in that Christmas red, and then this fluffier bow, surprisingly with the same little pearl and the same <laughs> Christmas red. And then I had some um, more of a shiny burgundy uh, red, what would you call these? Like a bead cord? Um, that I thought maybe I could put those um, around as a trim or I could tie it up on the sled handle. Wasn't sure. And I grabbed some green. This is kind of an emerald green. Just a, like an elastic that you could make a bow out of. So that was my bring this along and ask Deb which one of these she likes best. So I got here and I said, Deb, which of these do you like best? And Deb said... <laughs> really like any of those necessarily I think I'd be given over more to a gross grain ribbon I said oh I don't have gross grain ribbon she goes I know but you have it all here and I said I know but that's why I came here <laughs> yes that's right it's here for you so we're gonna we're gonna find out start to finish so it's why not like Deb... I really don't I'm I just think that those are very fancy looking well and, and to me when fit the style that's why I'm yeah that's what I was gonna say to me when I look at this Oh, this bow got a little wonky, sorry. Um, but they just didn't quite fit the style. They looked extremely fancy. And Shiny and... These just, 
they look more earthy to me. Um, so I, that I didn't sort of country. Yeah, I just didn't think that that kind of fits. So I I had this ribbon back there um, with the, the lighter green mesh ribbons. ribbon, and then there's a itty bitty tiny silver cord in there, and then the red gross gain ribbon. Um, and I thought that was pretty on there. It is it, pretty. It, and I like that, that color earthy. of the green mesh. Yeah, I like that too because I like it with your green mm -hmm. um, in your stitching. So there, the pretty. difference, if you compare them, is kind of nice to see between something a little fun added there at the top. Yeah. And it's not a lot. I don't, no, I no, don't necessarily no, no, no. want to overstate no. the sled. No. But and, no. and the other thing I said was, you know, you could even, um, we had originally looked at like those little V's. Originally, Deb said, well, if I used anything out of your little stack there, <laughs> she said, I would probably use this little red just one little and bow. maybe just put it up mm -hmm. at the corner somewhere on it, which is also okay. But see, when you look at it together, you can see that those reds aren't even the same tone. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's more of a brown red than mm -hmm. a blue red. So right. Anyway, so yeah. that's how we ended up with that. Yeah, and as you wouldn't have to do much either. To, I mean, you could just leave it as is. It's they turned out so cute. Oh, the other thing she suggested would be to take two of the colors in the design and make a um, cording out mm -hmm. of it and run it around the edge. Real thin. Cord. So I think I might that give that pretty. a shot. See what I come up with for colors. For yeah, that. that would be pretty. Yeah. They're very cute. But I was happy I got those finished. And to adhere this on the sled, you used yes glue. I did. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes. Yes. We. Oui? Yes. <laughs> oui. um, that's a glue that they taught us about in our class with the um, news press. Um, news press is that the name of the company? I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Um, it was at one of our jamborees. Yeah. It's um, um, used for binding in books and book covers and things like that when they put them together. And oh, we used it on the yeah. chipboard. Mm -hmm. um, it's awesome. And the binding. When it dries, it dries so evenly. Mm -hmm. And all I do when I do it on something this size is I take my Q-tip, I run it through the paste. And it is, it's a paste. It's not really a glue, liquid glue of any kind. I can show them. And I run it, I just roll my Q-tip over the back of whatever I want to attach. And um, and then I just put it on. I give it about eight hours, and it's see-through. This is it. Comes we got those. Tub. I found those at Joann's for us after we went to our class mm -hmm. and ordered it through Joann's. But I made sure I ordered enough for free shipping because they're heavy <laughs> little guys. They are. Yeah. Yeah. It's very dense. Mm -hmm. Show them what it looks like okay. inside. It's it almost awesome. looks like you're opening up a thing of petroleum jelly. And a really, really tight thing of petroleum jelly. No go? Thanks, okay. Liz. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna show you the inside because it's hmm. um, a secret. <laughs> no, I need some hot water. There oh, you go. Oh, oh, she got it. Hmm. Whoa, that's being around all those steers. Yeah, built up your muscles. Okay. I don't want to. There we go. It is a paste. Just looks like jelly to me. Oh, like hair paste. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, it won't be there next week either. <laughs> Well, that section me. will be. It's <laughs> <laughs> not going ever. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's nice stuff. Now, you can use this that is for what almost Deb's, anything. Yes. Yeah, show me. This is what I Deb's see why been the hammer on. in the wood is here. I brought the wood. <laughs> I brought the hammer. <laughs> you want to guess? Now what we're I in shop class. You don't want to guess what I finished. What did you finish? Now I have no clue. No clue. No. Right. Let me see. Did Ooh, I even the bag of goodies? Did you I, not bring it? I, no, but I did bring what I wanted to bring. I'll show you. <laughs> See, the first thing I had to figure out is which nail to use. Oh, good Lord. So, I have two sizes. And you can see one diameter of that nail is a little broader than the other. So, I ended up choosing the narrow one. And you'll see why I wanted as small as I could get on the point. We had a project. Deb wasn't in this class. This was my class. At Stitches Unlimited. <gasps> oh, Remember yes. Remember that? And... It's a needle, yes. uh, a needle case. It's um, it's really pretty. Look oh, at the she actually showed call this it Grandma's a few heart. videos ago. Yeah, yeah, when you're ready to take the class. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Now, this heart has a buttonhole stitch all the way around it, but inside is a piece of plastic acetate, and you have to go through that with your needle. 
after my carpal tunnel surgery, I had tried stitching on this for a while, and it would make my wrist and my hand really sore. Yeah. So I thought, you know, a needle or um, a nail set, you know what a nail yes. set looks yeah. like? I thought that would be perfect. Well, no, they're much wider at the oh. end. And they didn't want it to be any bigger than it had to be so that just my thread showed through. Yeah. So we'll start with the, the little Aww. pin cushion. Finish the pin I cushion. love the colors. Yeah, they are. They're, they're really pretty. And oh this gosh. is a different style of uh, pillow filling. Um, you do it on the back. And I do have a small piece of that um, piping left. Do you think I should run it over that seam? No, I think it's cute. You like it there? Yeah, I do. Okay. I think it's cute. So he's done. Aww. Pin cushion. Thanks, Liz. No problem. <laughs> then we have our floss tag. That is so cute. Oh, that's so cute. And the floss tag. Wow. And what I really liked about this, she Aww. gave us a piece of double-sided interfacing. Yeah. And that interfacing That's goes so just cool. to the edge of where oh, you fray. Your blanket stitch is beautiful. Thank you. And that fraying, I mean, it literally matched up That's awesome. with how much fraying. So that won't wow. fray any beyond that by using the double-sided interfacing behind it, which is clever. Wow. Now I can tuck that away in my arsenal of what to do when I don't <laughs> want anything to fray. And Sweet. then down to the final Oh my piece. gosh! I had no idea you finished this. I didn't <gasps> until like five days ago. Oh my goodness. So that what I beautiful. did was I took that little nail and I used this board in the kitchen and <laughs> I tacked a little tiny hole through the acetate all the way around <laughs> and then I sat down in my chair and I just went oh this is so That's easy awesome and I put oh all my those gosh. holes in there oh I love it and there's my my wow. thread and needle up in the corner oh that is awesome and I and you had to you had to tack the or the articulated hearts on the sides That's awesome and then um you can see that probably more from the back and then this just folds up. I love up. that felt too. Yeah, wow. that's nice. What this a cool project. Folds up inside. I'm trying to figure out whether I like the way it... Did I use too much floss on the on the connections, do you think? Is it... I don't think so. I, was, I mean, you want to make sure it Yeah, I was fearful if away. I just used one or two strands yeah, that it would wear through. Fully, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. I think it's really pretty. Okay. Wow. Oh, and um, these hearts have two pieces of acetate in them. Oh, okay. One on each piece of fabric. You mm. you wrap them first. Wow. So Good grief. How are you supposed to get a needle through yeah. that? Yeah. So wow. I actually used my my uh, nail in the corners down here, um, wow. where I actually put the tack to these two pieces. So I used that here, too, in these four corners uh, to get it through. What did they say in the class to, I mean, you, any... You use a thimble. Yeah. Oh. And what I found using the thimble and trying to drive it through something that stiff is the needle actually flexes, the sewing needle. And I ended up driving it through or over into my thumb, even though I had a thimble yeah. on it. I would end up poking myself. Wow, that's a great idea. Now, these are covered in palestrina knots the whole way around all the sides of these hearts and down the center. But on these, you're only grabbing the, the fabric on the edge of the acetate. Okay. So this border, which is very hard to see. Yeah, I wish you, you could see You can see, see the little knots yeah. there if you look closely enough. Get right up to your camera <laughs> or your, your phone and look at those knots. Um, but... Oh. I was really happy to have finished that piece, and that's... You put the wrong initials the on there. Front. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. How many times do I have to tell I you? I know, I know. It's terrible. <laughs> and then the back. So, beautiful. We have our set. Oh, that's awesome. Are you going to bring it to the guild? I you was thinking bring it Saturday. I might. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's two other ladies in the guild. That really turned out funny. Um, I did it because Stacy, one of our guild members, was after us to, are you going to take the class? You're, you know, I'm coming all the way up yeah. there to Lancaster, and, yeah. and you guys aren't going to go. And I so wasn't finally home. I said, all right, I'll go. And we had not been to several of the guild meetings from early summer till the end of the year. So we're going Saturday. Deb's part of the program Saturday. Mm -hmm. She's going to be talking to everybody. And um, I'm wondering if anybody else finished theirs mm. and brought Stacey it in. Stacy might have. Yeah. 
Who else took it from the guild? Robin. Rob. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. So we'll find out. That is anyway, awesome. That looks beautiful. Thank you. So that was fun. So nice. I was really happy to finish it. Very, very that. nice. So I had a couple of things. And who was done. the designer again? Oh, that's Beth Seals. It is Beth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Summer House oh, Designs. Beautiful. Yep. She does such nice yeah. work. I should show you that pattern again. Now this, the way that the hearts fold up. Mm -hmm. Is there a name to that, or did Beth come up with that? No, this was something that was like what her grandmother had oh my when gosh. she was younger. How does she talk so about neat. that? She has a little little story in here. Um, that is really cool. I think it was designed after something her grandmother had, and she actually had it at the class, if I oh, remember did right. She? The original one that she Aww. sort of took it from. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm throwing all my class stuff all over. Boy, this, this felt is just... Is it, is it felt? It doesn't... It is. Wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yep. Well, she doesn't actually... Hmm. She doesn't actually tell the story in here, but she did tell a little Beautiful. bit of it. Um, but if I recall, it was something that her grandmother had, and she made a piece after, in fashion, after what her grandmother used to keep her needles in. Wow. She and the one that she has is worn. I mean, like Aww. some of the stitching is worn off the sides and the corners, so mm. it was used a lot. And I was thinking, count? Uh, or the fabric. Yeah. Uh, what did they get? Thirty-two. Okay. And pretty. Um. I was wondering, back to the geeky side of me, would you like use a different section for different sizes of your needles so you knew? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was yeah. thinking. Like I could do uh, my most common, which would be my, for me, my petite 26 and 28 and then maybe my 26 and 24, 28 standard sizes on different halves of, yeah. the, of yes. the... I also thought I might cut a small piece of felt out um, that would make, and not glue it down, but maybe just stitch it to the fabric at the top. And give me just something a little easier to stick my needle into if I wanted to use these pieces. I was going to say, it'll be a lot easier just using these two. Yeah. And then just leave these plain. Just not use them at all. Yeah, because that's a large area yeah, that's on both true. sides. Yeah. You might be fine with just using it in the felt. Yeah. That is just Maybe so cool. that's what I'll do. And so easy to just stick down in, you know, your... Yeah. Even like our, our baskets, our kits that we take with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought about taking... I have room in mine, so <laughs> if you have trouble, no sweat. No, no sweat. <laughs> this little piece that's left, I thought of, about of the oh, trim. Yeah. If I put, if I attach it to the back and put a little pearl button, like right here, I could just wrap it, and it would hold it shut. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to, if I wanted to secure it, mm -hmm. you know, for fear that it might lose something. But um, that's cool. It is kind of feel, feel how it just falls open in your hand. When yeah, you I know. It, that's it has awesome. a nice weight to it with that yeah. plastic. Yeah. I kind of cursed it a little bit. Yeah. My breath while I was poking <laughs> holes through it, but uh, you got your nice anger way. out with a hammer. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen the look on Rick's face oh, when I, I came walking in from the I garage. Bet. Yeah. And you're doing what with that? <laughs> it's no home sweat. and wood shop all combined. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a a metro. <laughs> Uh, a metro oh something class for stitching. Very cool. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank I love you. it. I did not know you were that far. I, d I wanted to surprise you. Yeah. I was pretty far along with the um, with the hearts. I had gotten almost two of those, the side pieces done. Okay. There were four of those. But I didn't know how long it would take me on the buttonhole stitch. Yeah. But with my little cheat there, yeah. it was really fast. It was like, oh my gosh, this goes through so easy. <laughs> And because I'd already lined them up, I didn't even have to think about it. Yeah, I, I know, already that's measured awesome. them out with the holes, so that was fun. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, that's part I think two. That's it. Yep. And <laughs> we'll be coming back to see you again on January. No, I don't have the calendar. Twenty so fourth. Sure. Really? Yeah. Today's the tenth. You see how well, fast I did yeah. that math? Two weeks. Mental math. Twenty fourth. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, and in the meantime. We hope you have um, a nice month in January, yes. and remember, as usual, to share the, share joy the joy of work. Bye-bye. See you next time.